Cubs would be better, Mr. Cubs. I've always heard it. Cubs shirt, Matt Sox shirt. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, Mr. Cubs fan. Mr. Coleman, who's so big in the house? They're playing today the same time as the White Sox. Oh, the White Sox. Oh, the White Sox. I'd like to call the Tuesday, October 1st meeting of St. Joe's County Board of Commissioners order. Please stand for the pledge and remain standing for a prayer. The flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance and wisdom and support as we begin this meeting. We seek blessings on the tasks before us. We seek to serve our community wisely and well and represent all members of our community fairly with decisions that promote the common good. Continue to remind us that all we do is for the pursuit of truth, for the greater glory of you and the service of humanity. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Before we go any further, if we could, I'd like to ask for a brief moment of silence. Um, Commissioner Thomas' brother Joe Thomas passed away last week. If we could just have a, a moment of silence. Business opening reading of bids. First item from Infrastructure Planning and Growth Edison Road at Birch Road intersection, four way flash of installation of four way conversion project. This is a much delayed, um, we still did not receive any bids on this, so I think we're just going to postpone this indefinitely. The feedback we've been getting is the, um, the groups who could perform this work, it's, they're pretty full, so the prices we would get would not be very advantageous. So I think we're going to just table this indefinitely until um, it gets brought back to us. Council, we can do anything formally with that. Do you want to table this item, or do you just want to re? Um, re, re I mean, we can withdraw it too, just because once we advertise for our quotes again, we'll just bring it back on the agenda if that's acceptable. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you're table I mean, we've got three contractors that we've been discussing with, and again, it's just where they're at right now and the material lead time is is outside of 20 weeks anyway that the prices they would submit to us today are not reasonable and they would prefer that we look to probably do this as a spring project so you're issue another RFP in the yes so i don't think you're tabling anything so okay. relative to this project okay. and, and we did formally advertise mr Casselli formally noted we have received zero bids so Yes. Thank you. Right, moving on to Timothy Road drainage improvement quotes. Uh, Jessica Clark, offices in the 4th, 7th, 11th floor for Department of Infrastructure Planning and Growth. Uh, the first quote we have is Timothy Road drainage improvement quotes. We received two quotes. Make sure I grab the right one here. Uh, the first one is from Walsh and Kelly in the amount of $183,500. And the second one is from JCI Bridge Group in the amount of $159,494.40. Were there any quotes submitted that were not read aloud? Seeing none, uh, we'd recommend that the Board of Commissioners accept the opening of quotes, turn it over to us for review, and recommendation actually at the end of the meeting today. Any questions or comments? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Last replacement of concrete for the Laurel Road Trail construction. Again, we received two quotes. The first being from McCullough Schulton Construction in the amount of $123,559. And the second from Selge Construction in the amount of $117,449.75. Are there any quotes submitted that were not read aloud? Seeing none, we'd ask again that the board uh, accept the opening of these quotes and we will make a recommendation for the award at the end of this meeting. Just to note as a reminder on this project, this is actually a project in coordination with Clay Township as they received a grant from the county for this and part of the partnership was that we were helping them administer the project. Uh, the county was providing uh, 
I want to say up to about 62,000 is what they were awarded plus then they provide the remaining costs of that project to build this trail. Questions or comments? I think Madam Engineer we're commenting that it's important in the to play Second. Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to reports and requests. First from the Board of Commissioners. First item is the accounts payable dockets. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. second. Motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We're going to. Is he here? Is that employee of the month? going to um, postpone the employee of the month for a few minutes. Moving on then to the 2020 holiday schedule. And before us, the 14-day uh, holiday schedule 2020. Any questions or comments? Is there a motion? Motion to approve the 2020 holiday schedule. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Moving on to the health department. First item request approval of resolution R10C2019 health fee changes. <coughs> Nico Russ, St. Joe County Health Department. Mark Espick, St. Joe County Health Department. Ninth floor, County City Building. Ninth floor, County City. Yeah. Go first, um, <laughs> we're proposing to increase the fees uh, for the environmental division. A lot of these fees haven't been increased since 2014, just through basic uh, operational cost uh, increases in salary. It's it's time to raise these fees. Most of them are going up twenty-five dollars. Uh, and then we also added a fee, a $5 fee for a FOIA request, which would be $5 per parcel. Okay. Any questions or comments? And then mine is for the nursing division, and ours are for the vaccine costs. Ours is for purchasing costs, including discounts, um, purchase for administration fee. Um, a lot of our vaccine costs have went up, so ours will be increasing to meet the profit margin criteria um, due to when we go to order, our costs have went up there. And we have also are requesting to add additionally to vaccine presentations, um, shingles vaccine and the high-dose flu vaccine. We regulate massage parlors, tattoo, and body piercing. You regulate them? Yeah, we inspect them, okay. uh, permit them, and. Oh, maybe you were doing that. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. You think you should expand? No. Really? No, thank you. You're inspecting and inspecting that. Yes. So you're increasing that when you don't inspect it. Yes, the, the uh, establishment and the practitioners all have to be permitted through us, and then we also inspect the establishment. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Is there a motion? Uh, motion to approve the resolution R-10-C-2019 health changes. Second. A motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next request approval to apply for the Indiana State Department of Health's Fetal Infant Mortality Review Program. Good morning, Robin Vita, Director of Health uh, Outreach, Promotion, and Education, St. Joseph County Department of Health. Office is here on the 8th and 9th floor in uh, County City Building. Um, this is our this is a renewal of a grant we have received um, the last four years. And this is the third cycle. Um, it funds our fetal infant mortality review coordinator, where we um, subsequently host um, case review teams and community action teams to ultimately lower the county's infant mortality rate. Any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. I'm going to your staff for getting this grant 
Um, because it's renewed, uh, are those positions already in your budget? They, they will be moving forward. Um, since the State Department of Health has asked us this year, each year the grant in the past has been two years of funding. Um, this year it is one year, or the proposed funding is one year of funding. Um, so we've been working with our Board of Health to see how that position can be secured in, in a county line item. Yeah, and I think you're right at the year, year one year is not our calendar year. So Correct. Like so yep. So you have somebody working on a council ordinance. We do. Okay. Yep. And um, this... I'm sorry? Both years. Yes. Sure yep. Yep. And then, and then certainly extend, I think I can speak for the board of commissioners, and all the things that have kind of the things in just the hospital and yeah. the health systems for paying the match. Exactly. Okay. Yep. And that's where, if we do have, um, where we feel the most confident is since we have had the program um, where we've been able to trend data for a minimum of three years thus far, we'll have strong partnership and support from both health systems to continue not only our coordinator's position, but potentially um, other positions in the future. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, um, you know, I, I want to make sure that we improve the decrease in the infant mortality Yep, we do, and I can, um, I'll gladly send, I'm surprised Sally would not have already. Um, we do each year do an annual report on our trends, um, what initiatives we're working on in the, the coming year. Um, because our number of desks in comparison to births is relatively low, um, our numbers kind of stayed somewhat static. Um, however, I think as we continue to look at our data, we get to the fourth year, the fifth year, we'll finally be able to see our numbers begin to trend down. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I'll, as soon as I get back, I'll send it um, our most current annual report to you. For sure. Awesome. Okay. For sure. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions? Is there a motion? Motion for the apply for the Indiana State Department of Health Fetal Infant Mortality Review Grant. Second. Motion to second. Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Human Resources request approval of open enrollment 2020 contract renewal with benefit focus. <coughs> Good morning, Kim Karkowitz, Director of Human Resources, St. Joseph County, offices on the seventh floor of this building. Um, the benefit focus renewal will take us through, extend our contract through November 30th of 2020. This is the platform that we use to do our enrollment for our insurance benefits. Uh, with our open enrollment starting on October the 8th, we do need to have this contract sent over to them so we can move forward. We are preparing for open enrollment starting today is going to be our general meeting at 2 o'clock for employees here in this chambers. Good afternoon, or morning. Uh, Troy Scott, r, &R Benefits, 1251 North Eddy Street uh, in South Bend. Um, we have uh, amendment number five to the uh, St. Joseph County Employee uh, Medical Benefit Plan. Um, you'll have three copies of it. It affects the active plan, uh, the retiree plan, and the, the supplement plan. Um, it's not really a material change. It's just cleaning up the verbiage on the eligible class. Uh, um, we've had a, a couple questions, and we've always handled it on a one-off, and we thought it would just be better to uh, uh, clean up the language as it uh, impacts elected officials and uh, uh, appointed county attorneys. Uh, 
Uh, normally, the el eligible class is required to work 30 hours uh, per week on a regular basis. We are adding the language for elected officials and appointed county attorneys uh, that these employees do not have a minimum hourly requirement. We were going to change that to uh, countless and tireless hours uh, put in, but uh, we, we went with not having a minimum requirement. So uh, that is how that impacts the active. Uh, the retirees, uh, just a subtle change here for the eligible class and the supplement class. We are removing the last sentence of the eligible class of the last day worked uh, for the same reason with the elected officials and appointed county attorneys since they don't have an actual schedule and would not have a last day worked. So we're just removing that to, to clean it up. Uh, are there any questions? Are there any questions, Kevin? <laughs> I certainly think, Joy, you're going to thank for all your hard work to bring up to people county save money. Kim, I just, uh, but, uh, but something's ringing a bell that, you know, now there's this 30, 30 hour rule here being expanded upon. Um, I thought in the past we had some exceptions for somebody who marks and, uh, and that for permanent part time employees, they're getting some kind of benefit, like, you know, over the weekends, you know, sort of over two and a half shifts a week, or they might have been doing it for 20 years. But that, that was just vacation time, not health. Or? Right, that was regarding the benefit time, not the actual medical benefit. When we're dealing with this particular amendment is for those positions that don't have the traditional work hours um, to that, and that would be that elected official and appointed <coughs> county attorneys, um, because it is not a traditional um, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30 um, with that. With other employees, we do have time cards and really work uh, shifts that we can actually show the actual work. These are ones that are off of that. Thank you. Next voter registration request approval of polling location. <clears throat> Ariel Brandy, Democratic Board Member for Voter Registration. Office is here on the fourth floor. Kim Riskovich, Republican Board Member, also here in voter registration on the fourth floor. So we have proposed that there are two polling locations, two precincts that will have new polling locations for the upcoming 2019 general election. Um, those locations uh, were the First Christian Church, which will now be the Mishawaka FLP number 91. We will use door N. Um, the St. Joseph County Young Men's Society uh, is no longer going to be used. We will use the South Bend Fire Station number four um, per Indiana code, we will be sending out the postcards like we usually do to the voters, alerting them of the polling location changes. Any questions or comments? Is there a motion? Motion to approve these two polling locations? Second. Motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Next, moving on to the Department of Infrastructure, Planning and Growth. They're trying to give your request S605-1819, Gregory Road, over Branch, or the Good morning again, Jessica Clark, County Engineer with offices on the 4th, 7th, and 11th floor for Department of Infrastructure Planning and Growth. We have a bid request for Redwood Road over Branch Potato Creek, structural replacement project. We requested to be advertised this Friday, October 4th, October 11th, with a bid opening on October 22nd. Any question or comments? Is there a motion? Motion to approve that. Second. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next bid request S575-1819, Crumbstown Trail over West Coast to get structure replaced. Uh, likewise, again, this is the bid request to have this project advertised for a bid letting. Same dates, advertise October 4th, October 11th, with a bid opening on October 22nd, please. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments? Is there a motion? Motion to approve this bid request. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next item is the approval of MnDOT contract R37480, McKinley Highway from Ash Road to Corwin Street intersection improvements with traffic signal change orders number 13 and 16. 
These change orders result in an overall reduction to the contract. The original contract amount was $5,662,028.53. The revised contract amount is $5,575,993.66. Change order 16 is just the balancing change order that uh, balances out all the contract items. And the change order 13 is actually not a monetary change order. It is a time extension change order for utility conflicts encountered during the project. And we recommend your approval. Any questions or comments? Commissioner Thomas. Thank you. Uh, certainly, change order 16 is welcome. They say, <laughs> you know, almost $90,000. Uh, change order 13, um, is there no penalty for that? Uh, with respect to this particular delay, it did not affect the overall progress of the contract. There's a 22-day extension we are requesting. It was something that we in the field saw that was necessary to go ahead and grant. The contractor actually did file a monetary claim against the utility for their actual monetary costs based on the delay. But for our contract, it's merely just a time extension. It would be a penalty to the prime contractor, not the utility company. Okay. But they're hoping to get paid by the They filed suit for this claim, yes. That seems kind of odd. You know, they're, 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 we don't have a penalty against them, but if they're going to make money off of it. Right. Did our, did our well, typically what it would be is the county would be responsible to pay 100% of the cost, and then the county would have to claim the suit uh, based on how this transpired. We worked with the contractor to where they're seeking their own damages because it was significant and it wasn't something that we wanted the county to have to expend and then try to recover. Did, did the citizens not have use of that intersection or road for a period of time because of the delay? Their, the actual closure was an anticipated closure. It didn't extend that part of it. It is more just extending the amount of work days they needed to complete all the work. And would you call it laziness or active? On this particular, there, the vault was an unknown condition, the actual size of the vault and the, uh, the amount of work that was necessary to do the work was such that AT&T wasn't able to schedule it in the time frame of our project. Should they have known they had a vault there? Probably. But it was unknown to them as well. And then uh, they, didn't get, they weren't able to schedule their crews to meet the time schedule of the contractor. Thank you. And then this last one in the fourth paragraph. You've got twice completion date, uh, years 2018. Yes. Are those correct? Those are correct. Okay. Yes. This has been a long project trying to final out due to one of the utility claim and some of the out other outstanding claims. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Is that a motion? Motion to approve the change orders number 13 and 16 for the impact contract R-37480 on the Phoenix Highway. Second. Motion second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next request for a little bit of award. S3031619 Bendix Road for <coughs> toll road rehabilitation. We open bids for the Bendix Road Rehabilitation or Bendix Bridge Rehabilitation Project on Tuesday, September 24th. We hmm. received three bids from Reith Riley, JCI, and Northern Indiana Construction. Based on review of the bids, we recommend the board award the project to Reith Riley in the contract amount of $1,774,542.75. This project is funded through the Major Cambridge Fund. Any questions or comments? Is there a motion? Uh, motion to approve the award to Reith Riley Construction Company. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Next, request approval of professional services proposal, Picometry International Corp. <coughs> Chain Finder Service Magic. Good afternoon or good morning. Bill Shalio, Economic Development with the uh, Department of Infrastructure Planning and Growth with offices on the 11th, 7th, and the 4th floor. The professional service proposal before you today for Pictometry and International Incorporated uh, relates to a proposal that was brought to you on August 20th. On August 20th, you approved this contract, but the, the proposal that was, or the contract that was submitted was actually an in-progress version versus the final version, which is attached to this document. What I'm asking for 
your approval today of is the actual corrected version of that document. Uh, if there's any questions, there's no material changes. It's just actually the corrected version that has all the, the right terms and conditions. So the, the price is still the same, and it's, it's still a good project for us to move forward with. So item F and item G are related to the same project. As part of a project we're working on in uh, northeastern St. Joseph County, we're, uh, we're working with Penn Township, PHM Schools, and a variety of other partners to do a bunch of pre-development work for a potential development project at the northwest corner of McKinley and Bittersweet. Uh, specifically here today are two sets of appraisals to appraise properties to extend a water line that exists between Bittersweet and uh, a point at Evergreen Drive. We have to get a number of appraisals. We have to get eight appraisals. The total price for the appraisals would be $2,690 uh, per appraisal for a not to exceed amount of $21,520. Two vendors were selected for this, uh, Appraisal and Valuation Professionals and Dave Wazak Appraisals. Both of these are appraisers that do a lot of uh, easement appraisal work uh, for City of Mishawaka and have done work for the county. Uh, we'd ask for your approval of both of those, both again, both proposals in the amount of $21,520. Any questions, I would be happy to answer. Thank you. Mr. Shell, you hmm? mentioned Mr. Pen, Madison. So PHM Schools owns a piece of the property uh, that would be affected by this project. And uh, did you mention some other government? Uh, Penn Township would be one of the other agencies. Are they going to reimburse us for these so this is actually an expense that we will bear as part of the, the, the joint project that we're all working on together. We will, we will take this piece of the project on. We need, if we look to do an industrial park at the site, uh, we would need water to the site. So this would be a piece of the work we would do anyway. And it's Mishawaka clean water, correct? It is fabulous clean water in Mishawaka, yes. Well, I, I believe that they're going to be part of, they're going to cover cost or be part of the cost of extending the water line. So this is part of the work we're doing to get them to build the water line. Well, these are putting this to be over $42,000. Correct. So I, I'd rather see Mr. Walker pay for it. Thank you, though. Yep. Counselor, are we okay to ask on this as well, or should we ask independently? You can ask on that second question. No, I have no question. No, it's actually in unincorporated area of St. Joseph County, yes. Those are the county roads that we need to appraise to make sure because we're going to have to put the water along there. So correct. That's why we have to do that. Right. right. Yeah. But they're going to put sewer lines in, correct? There's already sewer lines in oh, McKinley. Right this is this is a water line issue connecting point A and point B. Yeah, we're just seeing where we can put the put it in front of the property. We have to right. We, can do that. we can't put it in the roadway. We actually have to put it off roadway, off on private property. Yes, yeah, so over the last year or so, we've been working with the Antero Group and DLZ and a variety of other partners to look at the development opportunities related to industrial uh, freight, logistics, manufacturing in the southwest quadrant to the airport. As we get closer to finishing up that master plan, uh, we need to amend the scope of the work of, of the Antero Group so that we can work to finalize this master plan process. Uh, we've got a couple of tenant or a couple of uh, prospects 
that are looking at the site, and so we have we have chosen to use some of the 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 funding uh, to to study work with those tenants, as well as doing additional work on rail design into the park, coordinating that work with DLZ and AECOM and some other business partners there. Uh, addendum one would be a contract proposal. Uh, Expand some eighty-eight thousand five hundred and seventy dollars. If there's any questions, I would be happy to answer. What is the original, is the original amount of that? Well, it's funny that you might ask because I was actually going to pass this to the next one, but we put together a master budget of all the contracts. I knew you were very kind to do that at my request. So this is the original contract was what four hundred seventy-five thousand nine hundred twenty dollars. Uh, no, it would be uh, three hundred and fifty thousand. It would be in that category, Mark South on Freight SBN Freight and Logistics Park. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Wow. So it has made one point two million on this so far. Well, they've actually made that on its its work there and the work it's doing out in the IEC. Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll save everybody's time. Everybody knows I'm not a fan of either project. So just... Yep, that's fine. I was going to say, I was getting confused up here. What's going on? It's Freaky Friday. So before you today is a proposal that has two parts. The first part is the request to file a grant with the Chicago South Shore and South Bend Railroad uh, to file a CRISI grant. CRISI stands for uh, Consolidated Rail Infrastructure and Safety Improvements. This grant is administered through the Federal Railroad Administration, the FRA, which is a division of the Department of Transportation. This Chrissy grant that we're applying for, we're seeking $4.5 million to do two projects. The first project is a replacement of the bridge uh, in New Carlisle over US 20. Uh, the bridge is, uh, is old. It doesn't carry a weight capacity to meet current weight needs for industrial development. Uh, specifically, we need the bridge to have a capacity of 286 uh, ton. And right now it has less than that. So the first piece would be a complete replacement of the bridge. Uh, there are some opportunities with that that it will allow for a wider span underneath the bridge. This opens up the ability to have pedestrian access under the bridge, something that doesn't presently exist. Plus it will be a bridge that will be much more substantial and uh, be a nice welcoming piece into the town. The second piece is to pay for industrial track into uh, land already owned by Chicago South Shore uh, near the intersection of Smilax and US 20. Uh, this will open up rail development opportunities for Chicago South Shore. Uh, so these two grants, or these two pieces together, again, a $4.5 million grant request. Uh, what we're being asked for is to partner with Chicago South Shore uh, at an $800,000 level. So we would put in $800,000. They would put in $800,000. We have some other business partners that are also putting in funding that that will raise our percentage match to a higher level. So that would be the first part of this, is the request to be able to file the grant. The Redevelopment Commission has already approved that request. 
The second piece of this is Bergman, which is a consulting firm that does these Chrissy grants, does a lot of other work, a lot of rail related work, is putting together the grant application with our staff and, and coordinating the, the, the development of the grant. Uh, the proposal is to split the cost of that grant. Uh, the, the grant preparation work is estimated to be $20,000. So we would split that work 50-50 with Chicago <laughs> South Shore. So our percent would be, or our, our fund end would be $10,000. So we'd ask for your approval to file for the grant and add an amount of 800000 by the county, as well as to pay the $10,000 to, to cover costs, or up to $10,000 to cover costs for the grant preparation filing. The grant would be due October 18th. If there's any questions, I would be happy to answer them. <laughs> Mr. Chow, when I first saw this letter from the Chicago South Shore and South and Railroad, I didn't recognize the name, and I was surprised it didn't say name. And then someone said to me, well, I think Nick D is the umbrella of the organization, and one end is the passenger, and that this Chicago South Shore is freight. No, that's that's absolutely false. There's actually two separate com companies. Nick did is the passenger service. It's the the silver trains, if you will, and then Chicago South Shore and South Bend is actually owned by Anacostia Railroad. Uh, Anacostia Railroad owns this as well as several other short lines. Chicago South Shore and South Bend has rights to travel on the Nick did owned tracks, and so they are actually a, a tenant, if you will, of Nick did on the tracks. At one point in time, they used to all be one company. Over the years, they've been split apart and separated. Thank you for that very good explanation. Mm -hmm. So Nick owns the tracks and the stations. That's correct. Um, federal money, 35%. Mm -hmm. is, 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 was that the thing that was announced in the paper last week? I think it was last Monday's Tribune, page 83. It was a story out of Munster that uh, the Port Lake and Quarter County had been designated as a federal uh, economic development zone for the Chicago Greater Land, Greater Chicago Land area. No, this is absolutely a completely separate thing. What they what they have received is federal ED uh, designation, which allows them to, to apply for grants at a different level or applies for funding and things like that. Did you see that article? I did. I, I thought it was interesting that they did the Cleet Sanctions County and the Chicago Greater Land Economic Area. Well, we aren't, we aren't part of that, the RDA, which received that designation, so we wouldn't be eligible to be part of that designation. Would these funds be paid out of the new Carlisle tip? Uh, they're proposed to be, that's correct. Uh, originally, I was a big fan of this, you know, but I thought about it. I like the map you gave me this morning. Uh, I see that the bridge is going to restore a bridge that needs some, mm -hmm. some modernization and passenger safety. Uh, I do have concerns, uh, grave concerns that uh, there be, while it's under construction, I don't know if it's going to be three months, three years. But uh, you know, it can really damage the town if that, if that crossing is closed for an extended period of time. My, my understanding the construction period is, is correct me if I'm right, one, one, two weeks. one to two weeks. Absolutely. Because it's built off alignment and, and built, and then the new bridge is put the in place. Also coming to her here. I think you might recall earlier this spring, I think it was INDOT did a project there, and they had the, the bridge supposed to close like three months. It was quite was a while, yes. Children couldn't visit, visit their grandmas, you know, uh, get to school, people get them to work. So I'm glad to hear that. So uh, with the understanding that it's coming out of TF20, I will support it. Fantastic. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Is there a motion? A motion to approve this quick grant. Second. A motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Also note, uh, yesterday's NICD board meeting, Todd was there. Um, Commissioner McGinnis from INDOT was at the meeting as well, so we had discussions there, so they will be providing a lot of support. Fantastic. Um, and it's, at least from a South Shore perspective, it's a very exciting project. I'm long overdue, so thank you for helping bring this to fruition. All right, next up, request approval of professional service proposal being the interior group addendum. So as we look to uh, release a draft version of the IEC master plan, the comp plan, and several other documents here in the, in the coming weeks, uh, we are 
at a point where we're, we're trying to get all these pieces put together. But again, looking at scopes and looking at budgets, uh, working at a point where we need to, to finalize some additional funds into the Antero Group's uh, budget line so that we can complete the work. Uh, Antero Group has served not only as our consultant, our master consultant, but also is serving to put together the plan and, and put together the, the versions that will be uh, rolled out as part of the draft rollout here in the next couple of weeks. Additionally, they've served as a, a project manager relative to some development projects that are that are working through the system. Uh, so this amount is is to cover all those expenses and those expenses that will come over the next couple of months as we finalize uh, the draft reports that will be released here in the next couple of weeks. If there's any questions, I would be happy to answer. Any standpoint in the Granger area with lack of proper planning from a sewer and water standpoint and also what we've seen from the city of South Bend in the Ameriplex area where, we, where there's not been the foresight from an infrastructure standpoint so we are trying to cram 20 years worth of work that could or should have been done into a smaller time because we want to make sure in the event development happens it's done responsibly and it's done in a way that we can sustain it. So I appreciate the work you're doing. And it's painful work right now. I understand, but it's critical to make sure that if development happens, it does so responsibly. So thank you for your efforts there. All right, last up, request approval. Generations to come, media project, big idea company <coughs> proposal. So as part of the rollout for the IEC master plan draft and ultimately the final versions of the documentation, uh, we wanted to get some additional assistance in, in putting together uh, a, a public presentation package that really addressed uh, all the issues that we've heard over the last couple of years, whether meetings here or meetings at the Redevelopment Commission or at the Council, just trying to get the, the public input and, and the public uh, perspective wrapped into this. The Big Idea Company, a, a local company that does a lot of media relations and, and referendum work, will be able to assist us as we craft the message and as we craft the, the outreach opportunities. We want to make sure that we're as absolutely inclusive, as absolutely transparent as we go through the draft and and master plan adoption process. Uh, so we're, we believe that Big Idea will be able to help us do that and help us get the word out and, and do all the things that are necessary. Uh, this proposal uh, has a, a very deliberate scope of work. Uh, total is uh, not to exceed amount of $72,000. There was an addendum Friday or an addition Friday where we actually put the contract in with this, this packet when we originally filed it. It didn't have the contract in with it. So the contract has been added. If there's any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Any questions or comments? Mr. Thomas. Thank you. Uh, earlier on item H, when it's here, the group uh, had a contract amendment, <laughs> it included that they would try to set up uh, and, and learn about trade shows in years <laughs> 2019 and years 2020. Would this uh, big idea company, would they be maybe hired to go to these trade shows in 2019 and 2020? So they would actually help us put together the materials, the messaging, the other documentation for websites related to going to trade shows or materials that would go to trade shows, either with us, with the South Bend Elkhart Partnership, with the Chamber, other agencies going to trade shows. So promote the, the industrial part that is not there yet. Correct. Well, I, I would say it is built. We have 2,000 acres of industrial development already out there. So. Okay. I still think it's a lot of money. Did you say it was sixty thousand dollars to NPR? Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. I would also note uh, that's just phase one, correct? That's correct. All we're approving is phase one today. Right, and we, we are not authorizing phase two. We're, we're getting through phase one to determine what our next step will be. Thank you, sir. Yep. Nobody for NPR. Hey, uh, National Public Radio. <laughs> right.
to the comments. Is there a motion? Motion to approve that uh, media project idea. Second. We have a motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion, motion passes two to one. Ms. Clark, you have a couple of uh, items you'd like to ask. Yes, based on the quotes that we opened this morning, I would recommend for the Timothy Road culvert installation drainage improvement that we award the project to G JCI Bridge Group in the amount of $159,494.40. Uh, we've got the, uh, the funds set aside to, to get this work done, and then they will work in cooperation with our asphalt maintenance package to finalize the paving of that stretch of road as well. Questions or comments? Mr. Collins. I, I think that means whatever JCI does work for us, uh, I don't get a lot of phone calls or complaints. So I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there more questions or comments? Is there a motion? Motion to accept the JCI bid. Second. Motion to second. For those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? I assume that concludes rewarding the project to them as well. Yes. Yes. Um, Thank you. One other item? Yes, for the Laurel Road Trail construction project, we would further recommend that we award this contract to Selge Construction in the amount of $117,449.75. Questions or comments? Is there? Selge Construction. S E L G E, out of Niles, Michigan. Please. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Don't believe our, so we may, we may table this until next month. Or until, until next in two weeks. We are meeting in two weeks. Um, She's not here. Oh, I'm sorry. So moving on to old business. Seeing none. Public comments. Are there any <coughs> public comments? Good morning, Dan Caruso, 305 <coughs> Compton Street, New Carlisle. Uh, I'm so glad I was able to be here this morning. Uh, you've answered a number of my, my friend's concerns uh, regarding the IEC. Um, Commissioner Castilny, thank you for the explanation on the importance of pre-planning. It still doesn't make us real happy. But I, we understand why this is going on. Uh, and, and you've made it perfectly clear that you're being very careful uh, and that Bill is being very careful with what's going on here. Uh, the transparency is, is refreshing. Um, months ago, um, Jessica Clark uh, assured me uh, at a redevelopment commission meeting that the Timothy Road project was on this year's agenda and it was going to get done. And as I see the hole continue to get larger there and uh, helping one elderly lady out of the marsh after she'd been directed into there by an oncoming truck, um, I was a little concerned. And then to hear, hear the bid actually awarded here at this meeting was uh, uh, felt good. And uh, thank you, Jessica, for following through on that. And uh, just say, uh, Jessica, for president. Thank you. I also note on Jeff's behalf that the item was one of the reasons why it was delayed as long as it had been as well. So that was, um, so I appreciate her staying on top of this and getting it moved forward as quickly as possible. Absolutely. Any other public comments? Seeing none, a motion to recess the order. Just, just for your information, we do have a trustee hearing, so we'll reconvene to hear Porter's Township Trustee case number 5790. Also, after three weeks, that's Mr. Phil Descendants here to have some documents executed related to the St. Mary's closing of their bond, uh, which you've approved. So, we will be a first action. So, the action also. to simply recess is to recess and reconvene with uh, It would be to recess and reconvene after Mr. Descendants. Yes, for trustee case 5790. Does that motion exist? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Tough luck. We are momentarily. <coughs> recess. <coughs> So we're, I'm going to 
Well, he's certainly not square. But you got to call him, huh? Yes. Hmm. You want to hand us all this paper right now? You're on that. Okay. I have to pour your beer. Just tease him. You're giving me a hard look. Well, if you knew it wasn't, yeah, it's going to be good. 
could see him. I'd say, tell him Father Lemos is coming next week. He's old now. For a special meal. Yes. Landing on top.
Chair. Bill. All right, so council, then we we're going to reconvene for um, appeal hearing zero zero five seven nine reporters township trustee. Uh, thank you guys for your patience this morning. Just go ahead and call me for this and I'll take some comments and we'll get going. All right. And to reconvene the October first meeting of St. Joseph County Board of Commissioners. Council. Thank you. So we're here on the hearing for the uh, appeal of a denial of assistance by Mr. Amir Coley. Mr. Coley, you're here? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Pullman, we uh, see that you're here. Who's with you this morning? Yes. Uh, with me is uh, Aaron Dombrowski, I'm a caseworker, senior caseworker, and then Tim Scott is a caseworker. Okay. Do I need a microphone down there? I think the mic is probably speaking loud enough. Everybody that's going to testify or say anything this morning, please raise your right hands. Do you affirm or swear that the testimony you're going to give this morning is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So how this starts, sir, this is an informal hearing. This is not a court proceeding. There are no formal rules of evidence or anything like that. So generally speaking, we'll hear from you first, Mr. Foley, as to why you believe that the denial of your petition for assistance was violative of Indiana law or the regulations set forth by the township. Uh, Mr. Coleman, we do appreciate that the commissioners have received a memo dated September 27, 2019, uh, regarding uh, some history regarding this file, so that's much appreciated as you get those to us on an ongoing basis to deal with the uh, Portage Township appeals. So we'll first hear from Mr. Um, Coley. Why do you believe that your denial of assistance was violative of Indiana law, sir? Um, it's not necessarily that I feel like it was violating the law for them denying my uh, me rights to uh, get help or anything like that. It's just that I feel like they were uh, assessing my situation uh, a little different. Um, for the most part, uh, what they were denying me for was based off of an income base. And they were saying that I make uh, too much money. But I was. Well, they are trying to say that I had enough income to cover my expenses and that they were denying me help. But I was trying to explain to them that my situation changes from month to month. Uh, what I make one month, I might not make the next month due to the type of business that I'm in, I'm all into, which is renting property, real estate rental property for the most part. And I was trying to show them that they, uh, the tenants that I had last time when I was applying for assistance is not the same people that I've been dealing with at, at the time now. So um, the bill that I was trying to get help with, I was denied, and I felt like they didn't properly assess my situation before denying me. That was it. Okay. Is there anything else you want to tell the commissioners relative to this matter? Do I want to Is there anything else you want to say? Well, I mean, for the most part, they've been uh, helpful for the most part in my situation. I've had come to them many different times and get help. I appreciate it. I'm not saying I don't appreciate what they do as far as helping. This was a, just one time where I really needed help on the bill. So that was the only thing I really need to say. Just really need you. Just really need your help at this time. That's it. Mr. Coleman will be speaking on behalf of your office. Thank you. Uh, I will speak on behalf of the office and uh, I may defer or uh, ask uh, Ms. Dombrowski or Ms. Dombrowski to um, uh, also offer comments. Um, the two criteria that we cited that made uh, Mr. Coley ineligible for assistance at the time of his application uh, was that he was specifically over income. And uh, Mr. Coley is right in point, uh, correct in pointing out that we have helped him in the past and his situation has varied. And our, um, uh, the, the, the assessment of his situation is done on a monthly basis. And in this particular month, he was over income and he had countable assets uh, that uh, prevented us from being able to provide him with assistance. Uh, that is the long and the short of the case. Um, so I, I would offer that much to you. Um, as and specifically the, the, the reason. Over income, you mean his income exceeded what you would have as your written policy relative that, to that, that's correct. Have for a month -to -month yeah, basis. that's correct. And I should also uh, mention that I've uh, done my best to outline 
those details in uh, my cover letter to the commissioners with regard to the, and then reference our uh, standards um, uh, in the office. Um, and we've, uh, what, we've been through this, pr the process with Mr. Coley on more than a few occasions to make certain that he was aware of what, not only what our standards are, but what the state statute spells out as well. Uh, and um, given him a copy of uh, the standards. I can appreciate uh, a level of frustration on his part that sometimes that he is eligible for assistance and other times he's not. However, um, that those are the standards that we are held to, so those are the standards that we enforce. I think the commissioner can take notice that in a very recent appeal hearing that we've had with the Porter's Township Trustee, we reviewed their standards there. Um, were modified recently in 2019, if I recall correctly. Correct. Actually, a few so times in 2019. So look at and evaluate on an ongoing basis. Are your standards stricter than the state standards um, or state statute? Uh, can I say in some ways, yes. In some ways, they are. In other ways, uh, they are at the same level as the states. And, of course, where there are, where the standards uh, don't specifically speak to, um, our standards don't specifically speak to a situation that may arise, uh, we default to the state's uh, guidelines on the standards. So from, from an income qualification standpoint, is, it, is, is your standard stricter than the state or? To the best of my knowledge, yes. No, no, it is it the, is it is the, the state standard. standard. Yeah, it so is. It's, yeah. Not, it's not even a, a, an issue of the you. It is not higher the, than the state right, standard. Not the rule, but this is what you are bound by the state. Well, the, the, the right, the assess, uh, uh, Mr. Kohler would be uh, well, welcome to visit our office during the month of October and apply again. And if we um, find that he is not over income or that he does not have countable assets, and we'll, when we refer to countable assets, uh, at the, the time of his application, his most recent bank statement, which was four days prior to his apparel, appearance at our office, um, showed that he had $1,448 uh, um, in the bank. And with those resources available to him, um, then we were left no choice but to say um, that he had, he or anyone in that position would have to use their own resources before they called upon us to, uh, to assist them, unless there were extraordinary circumstances. And we didn't see any extraordinary circumstances in Mr. Coley's situation. The, uh, I, I want to point out uh, something else for future reference. Uh, uh, there is a um, unique aspect to Mr. Coley's case in that uh, he does have a, a tenant in the building that he also resides. And in this instant, in this, uh, in this case, um, he uh, said he reported that he was a household of one. And as a household of one, um, then uh, if, he, if there are utilities that are shared with someone who is not in his household, that would make him immediately ineligible for any benefits because it would be someone who is not in his household who would also be receiving the benefit um, of, say, a, a utility bill if they, if you, utilities are shared if they are not separated for the um, for the two tenants. And to the best of our knowledge, um, there is no separation of the utilities for the building that uh, Mr. Coley resides in and that he has a tenant in, up, in the upstairs portion of his uh, building. So I, I just want to mention that for your benefit so you're aware of that in the future. So uh, in the past, Mr. Coley has come to us and um, identified other members of his household and we've been able to uh, verify income on them. In one case, um, he did not uh, verify income on an additional member of his household and that was in May and he was denied at that time assistance um, because we didn't have the information that we could process to make a determination as to whether he was eligible or not. But we have assisted him on seven different occasions during the year 2019. Earlier, mm -hmm. but in your write up, you said that you felt Mr. Coleman and the 
the staff that personally, somebody against you personally. Did you not mean that? Oh, and it was just a. You know, part, me and him a, a, a few times going on down there, it, it seemed like we've had a few, what do you want to say, clashes or whatever, getting into a few minor little altercations of me getting help. It's been times where I, I've, you know, I felt like. Proper service, or you know, whatever you, you want. But you may not always get what you want. But I'm sure they're they're always kind and respectful to you, even if the answer is denial. And then okay. I'm sure they're always kind and respectful, aren't they? I mean, everybody's not the same every day. No, I'm not. I don't come up there with the same attitude every time. So I, I understand why he might be sometimes that way towards me. I, you know. And you you understand the rule about income level? Uh, that wasn't explained to me in specific detail when, uh, you know, or it wasn't, I you haven't seen it in black and white. What is the specific rule about detail level? I mean, if, if you're single, it's $1,012? Yeah. Okay. And, and this is what I was trying to say to him. Okay. This is what I was trying to show them when I, uh, when they say I was overqualified, they, uh, when I showed them a bank statement that, uh, And the bank statement showed the money that you had more money than you were. Yep, yeah, this is what I was trying to explain. This is what was deposited into the account. First month's rent plus seven fifty for a security deposit. A security deposit is not counted as an income. That's something that has to Are you saying the money you received from your tenant? This was from the when they first moved in. Your tenant paid My tenant. Well that. they didn't pay. It was from DCS, the people who she was moving and trying to get her kids. Someone was paying your tenant's rent. The DCS. Yes. This is why I brought this up here. Yeah, uh, so they were helping her getting to get into a place so she can have a place to stay where she can continue. So they just initially helping her to so get. So you're saying place. it's not income; it was revenue to your business. That's not what I'm saying. If you listen okay. to what I'm saying, okay. I, if you would read this piece of paper, when the tenant initially moved into the place, which was nine four nineteen, uh, well, we're just basically this month. Uh, month of, uh, what was it? September. It might have been, yeah, it was September when she moved in. They only gave a, uh, they paid her first month's rent to move in and they paid her security deposit. Usually the security deposit is fully refundable to the to the tenant. It's not counted as an income. Only only thing that you can really count as an income is the, uh, the rent. You get what I'm saying? The rent is something that I can spend. The security deposit just is 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 there just in case they don't pay rent or they damage something that they. Uh, Sir, I see a difference in the word between revenue and income because I'm an accountant. But I understand that also the term deposit. So, you know. Okay. So, uh, so I, I think what you're really saying is that the money that was in your bank account was not your income. That's not what. Yes. It was your business's revenue and deposit. Yeah, it's expenses out of it. It's a okay. utilities included I department. There. Yeah. I got you there. Mr. Coleman, uh, does your does your guidelines and the state guidelines do they do, do, do there's our separation between income and revenue? No. Okay. So the revenue would be considered wow. income. That's correct. Okay, thank you. All right. Now, okay. sir, the only thing we're allowed to do by rule three is when you, at this appeal process is not retry the case is to hear from you if you think he didn't follow, this department did not follow their rules. Okay. Is there a, did they not, did they follow their rules? I don't know. If, when, I, when I've never read their rules, I don't know if they're following their rules or not. Do you, do you get that, sir? Yeah. Be, you said there's a difference yeah. between, like, because I go to school for business, too. I know the difference between what revenue is, that's yes. just income coming in, and then I know the difference between yes. uh, income. So, yes, I was showing him this is revenue, but it's not my income. You know, only seven hundred and fifty dollars that I, I get see paid that, every but month. The government doesn't see it that way. Apparently. Well, uh, so okay. Uh, so unfortunately, so it's, he's followed his rules. Okay. And and so unless you okay. can prove that he did not follow his rules, why okay. is it dying? Oh, because I don't I don't make that much every month. Yeah. That's my only source of income at this moment, at this time, which is seven hundred and fifty dollars a month, and I have to pay utilities out of that. So that is my total income. Hey, did you hear what he said about utilities? Did you hear what he said about utilities? Yeah, I heard what he said about the utilities. That if you have your tenant using your utilities with your name on it, you're going to be automatically disqualified. 
that might have happened in May. So you, your tenants got to have their own utilities, okay? And you can't have that much money in the bank, okay? Understand the rules and file and play with the problem. I don't have that much money in the bank. That's why when they asked me to go get bank statements and all that, I showed them but the, the type of there. money that do the come into the bank. Yeah, I understand. It was there at that time, the, it, the short deposit, but it was taken right back out. But this it is was there. It was, it was recorded. And again, the thing with the utilities, I'm pretty sure I heard the trustee that, it, sir, I'm going to ask you to repeat that again if that's all right. So if I understand it correctly, if he's got a tenant living in his house and he's only got one set of utility bills, then he would automatically be disqualified when he claims there's only one in this household. That's correct, because you would be sharing the benefit with that. How have I been helped in the past? You've been lucky. How have I been lucky? Wow, that's funny. I've been lucky, but other other people, I guess, <laughs> wow. I've okay. been lucky. Know the rules. Okay. okay, well, I would like to, please give me a rule book so I can read that okay. myself. Okay. I would like that rule book when you get a chance. I want to read that I myself like and go over that. I, I definitely, would, I definitely would like to read those rules myself so I can understand it more uh, you know. Yeah, that's not the function of this board. Yeah. I'm sure they're at the library or a website. Okay, well, and, that's fine. Uh, Wherever they are, I like to read it. I'm sure Mr. Yeah. Uh, Moore, uh, Coleman would be happy to give you that address or website address. For, uh, for the record, we have given Mr. Coley a copy of our standards for 2019. Thank you. Do you, yeah, do you recall receiving the book? Excuse me? He says he gave you a book. Do you recall receiving it? I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't recall it. I wouldn't call it a book. Okay. I mean, we, we've information. Yeah, the informational piece. And we've also referenced uh, state statute as well, pointed out uh, references of state statute to the standards that were held to. Would it be great cost to give him another copy? No. Thank you. Can I ask a question, too? Sure. I, I would like to ask this question. I see they had the mis of the meetings and stuff here. Well, you know, this is my first time ever coming to one of these meetings. Where do they get all of this income to finance all of these projects in the first place? I would like to know that. Well, like, like the income, the money the trustee gives out to people, mm -hmm. it comes from property taxes. I pay property taxes. I'm a property taxpayer, and not only tax, I mean, I file taxes to pay taxes. And you probably pay double so taxes. Isn't that part, right? Excuse me? You probably pay double taxes because your property's commercial and you have your landlord. Well, um, for the most part, I mean, Taxes can fluctuate, it depends. You get what I'm saying? But still, uh, you're paying property taxes. You, I mean, you're putting your part in, too, at the same time. So I feel like I, sh if I should be able to qualify for something, you know? Mr. Conley, I'm just going to advise you, and then we're going to have to move on. Learn the rules, review the rules, and uh, understand this about your utilities, understand about leaving money in the bank. Learn the rules, follow the rules. Okay. Commissioner Castelli seems like we've got a fair and adequate hearing this morning. What do you want? Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, when you have income coming in, it's not yours. Maybe you have another account. You put it in your business account, and it's just your account. So it would be better. I, I, so did, I haven't done it up under any type of business or any type of okay. I, I'm doing everything just Because if it goes up into your account, it's all your account. For my commissioner's benefit, I think yeah. it's kind of added, actually. I can do the state as that rule. But like Social Security, if you you have the, you have the income level, Social Security, and but if you have a business, if it's an expense, the revenue versus expenses is two different things. Right. If well, if, even if you don't have a business, they still allow you to write things off, you know, as an expense. You know, they still allow you to do that when you file your taxes and things like that. That's why when they say bring your past thirty day of receipts and stuff like that, I was going to bring that just to show you. Hey, yeah, I have expenses and things like that. Commissioner Castellani, as, as counselor has noted, we've, we've discussed and I think thoroughly gone through this matter. And following Rule 3, it does not appear that the trustee's office has violated the rules in any way, shape, or form. So I wish a motion to sign for the, the trustee's office. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Motion recesses in order. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.